As we've seen power levels rise with high performance turbocharged aluminium block engines, the actual strength of the engine block can become a limiting factor into how much boost and hence how much horsepower that engine block can survive with. It's become a common option with these engines to fit aftermarket ductile iron sleeves in place of the factory liners in order to improve strength. And we're here with John from Darden Sleeves to talk about what goes into that technology. So John, for a start, let's talk about those factory alloy blocks. What are the weaknesses with those blocks and why are the factory alloy blocks a limiting factor in terms of power and boost? Uh, the biggest issue with say the, OE, the OEM setups is pretty much all of them, 90% of them come with the, say a stock cast iron sleeve in them. Um, issue with that is it's, it's a lower grade material, they're just doing primarily for cost effectiveness. Um, their sleeves are only about probably 30, at the max, 40,000 tensile strength. Uh, not a lot of you know strength in that sleeve. And then they're also casted thin because they're not trying to go bigger bore. They're pretty much making that block that bore size and that's all it's going to do. Um, so you're limited on how much power that can actually take because there's also zero ductility with cast iron. Any type of movement or flex in that cylinder, since it is only cast iron, it will end up cracking and stuff, and that's going to be a real big limitation, especially when you're trying to take a stock block and increase the power, add more boost, um, go much higher compression pistons and stuff. So adding any more power than what the OEM manufacturer intended to, it will lead to you know eventual failure because that cast iron sleeve that's in the block. Another problem with a lot of the alloy blocks that we see are what's referred to as an open deck design where uh, the sleeves and the cylinders themselves are really not connected to the outside of the block. Uh, so this also presents some other problems even aside from actual uh, sleeve strength with the sleeves moving around and causing problems with heat gasket failure. Is that is that a sort of a common scenario? Um, it is because same issue with the standard aluminum. They still come with the stock cast iron sleeve is not as much support. And then added to that, um, the biggest issue with that that you know goes hand in hand is since there's open deck configuration block, problem is there's no upper structure or any support. So what happens under say a high horsepower application um, is you end up getting sleeve walk and stuff. So the cylinders start rocking under a high boost, high, you know, the higher horsepower um, application. So as soon as you get any type of movement, that cast iron ends up cracking and stuff or cracking all the way out to the aluminum ends up blowing head gaskets or cracking the cast iron. Even if we're getting to a scenario where we aren't exceeding the strength of that cast iron sleeve and it's not actually cracking, uh, with that open deck design, uh, the sleeves will still tend to flex a little bit at very high boost levels and uh, ultimately distort slightly and that's going to still even affect our ring seal and hence the power of the engine even if we aren't cracking the sleeves, is that correct? Correct, yeah, it's, it's zero your limiting factor of being cast iron. Um, having that open deck is just weakening the support. Like they said, any type of movement with that, then you're actually going to get failure, or it's going to go distort and just completely go out around anyway. It's not going to maintain its figure and stuff throughout you know, the higher horsepower applications. Okay, so let's talk about Darden's solution to this. So uh, you produce a range of ductile iron sleeves. Uh, in particular, the product that I want to talk about here is your MID uh, sleeves that are used to replace uh, the factory car sleeves on on uh, a lot of those open deck design blocks. So can you tell us what those ductile iron sleeves are and how they work? Um, our MID sleeve, um, it's made from our proprietary material, which is ductile iron. Um, it's based on an ASTM spec for ductile iron, but we actually tweaked that metallurgy to be able to, to work with a piston ring better than you know what the standard ductile iron actually is. So what it is, it's taking, say, your 30,000 tensile strength cast iron that's in a block and we're replacing it with a much thicker wet sleeve, and then it's going to end up 100 to 130,000 tensile strength, but at the same time still be ductile to where if there, say, is real high horsepower application where there may be any distortion or flex in the bore, it'll actually flex and stuff and not end up cracking and stuff, but it'll still kind of have a memory effect and stuff and still go back towards the original shape once the horsepower actually drops back down. Now there's two aspects that I want to talk about there. So uh, first of all, uh, you've talked about the improved strength of your proprietary material. But on top of the improved strength, you're also now, because you're removing that factory, duct, the factory cast iron sleeve plus the alloy that surrounds it, you've also got a much thicker wall to your ductile iron sleeve, correct? Correct, yeah. I mean, you're looking at, say, minimum. You're going from the usually stock cast iron, which is only maybe 30, 40,000 um, 
thickness in the actual stock, and then about another you know 100,000 in the OD of the, of the aluminum. We're eliminating all of that and replacing it with a full wet sleeve design, which will completely take down the weakest part of that block and replace it with a sleeve that's going to be 150 to 250 thou thick in a material that's also two to three times stronger and then giving you full support at the top so you don't have a problem with that sleeve walk or the cylinders actually moving on you and stuff under the higher horsepower application. Okay, so now just to talk about that ductility because uh, I know you showed me before you've got uh, a sleeve out of a top fuel engine made out of that ductile iron material and uh, you press that uh, almost completely flat in uh, a press and yet it still hasn't cracked, correct? Correct, yeah, I mean it'll show the material. We're actually able to take our material, this is a top fuel sleeve that say John Force, you know, Schumacher or Clitter Racing would use, and we're able to actually take this sleeve and crush it down probably to roughly about almost about a little over an inch. Um, and the sleeve actually's memory effect will actually allow it to spring back and stuff without cracking, without any, any you know, shines of wear, so just because of the ductility and strength of the material. So obviously if your sleeve crushes to that sort of uh, diameter in operation, you've probably got bigger things to worry about than your sleeve cracking, but it's a good indication or demonstration of exactly how flexible that material is. Now the other thing I want to talk about here is the way those MID sleeves uh, convert an open deck design block to effectively a closed deck. So can you tell us how that works? Yeah, especially what we're doing is we're eliminating all of that freestanding wall. Um, which is technically the weakest part of the block anyway. So using that uh, kind of limits and stuff of what you are able to do um, size-wise and power-wise. So we're limiting that port on process and then installing our wet sleeve. So then that's allowing you to get full support at the upper deck of the block so you have zero movement. And then at the same time, since the material is so much stronger than what the stock casting is and it is thicker, it also allows you to increase displacement safely and still be able to push you know, a safe amount of boost to it, but increase the displacement and adding more rigidity to the block. Now, I know that a lot of people have trouble with the installation of sleeves, and obviously with your MID sleeves, uh, there is a significant amount of machine work required to the block in order to correctly fit them. But a common complaint I hear about uh, sleeves in the aftermarket is that in operation they can drop. Uh, so what causes this dropping and how can that be circumvented during the installation process? Um, majority of the time, it's, it's pure installation error. Um, the way the sleeves are designed, they have a large, large register on them. It's a solid piece of metal. There's no moving parts. Um, there's not, you know, nothing moves. It it's maintains its shape and stuff. Maintains its form once it's installed properly. Biggest issue is with installation. If the sleeves are going to move, it's because you're giving it somewhere to go. A lot of times they have problems where they're decking the block and the sleeves aren't completely seated. Um, or they're just not following. We have specific installation manuals that show you process step by step from setting up the block, measuring, you know, checking where your register is going to be, um, gives you the tolerances. If you're not able to hold those tolerances and stuff, you're going to have problems with installing a sleeve. The sleeve is going to move at that point because the tolerances aren't held to spec or the machining is just not exact as it could be and stuff. If you're not using, a, like I say, a three to four axis CNC. Um, that would be your minimum uh, basis upon being able to machine the block properly is it going to be a CNC machine. So what you're saying there really is this, this installation to do it properly you're getting beyond uh, the capability of actually doing a good job within your tolerances using manual equipment? Correct. I mean everything's going to have tolerances to it um, and when you are working with say a half a thou with our stuff it's going to be half a thou to thou tolerances. A lot of times without a CNC that's going to be difficult to maintain especially trying to maintain bore center where that's critical because a lot of blocks and stuff have you know they're thinner on one side than another. Some of them need them interpolated cut and stuff and able to put the sleeves in. You're not able to do that with a standard boring bar and stuff or a standard bridge port um, you know, without having digitals on it at least you know to be able to maintain that bore center so that three to four axis CNC will give you a lot more accurate and stuff so that'll eliminate the process of you uh, taking guesswork at it and stuff and able to machine the block properly and get the sleeves in because once the sleeves are in they're seated there's a large large register on the bottom heads go on to the top everything's held in compression of each other so generally if everything's machined properly everything's held in with tolerance everything's measured exactly where it should be there's nowhere for the sleeve to go now in terms of their installation as well, I know there's uh, multiple schools of thought on whether the sleeves should sit proud of the deck surface of the block uh, once everything's been machined ready for assembly uh, or whether the sleeves should be flush with the deck. Is uh, there any recommendations from Darden on that particular aspect? Um, it comes down to preference and also application. 
Um, standard street cars where you're just trying to freshen up a block, you just need to you know get it running again. It's going to be standard horsepower, nothing too elaborate. Um, you generally can flat deck the block. That's going to be a problem. Let the MLS do its job. Um, a lot of times when you get to the ho higher horsepower applications, um, some people either prefer to step deck where they're leaving up the compression area, two to three thou, um, or running a seal wire in the sleeves. It all it comes down to number one. Uh, how much power you plan on running? Is this a street car or is it a drag car? Um, is it a road race car? Um, it depends on you know the power you're making and stuff. How big a bore you're going? Because a lot of times when you go to the max bore size on a sleeve, there's not enough room for a seal wire, so you have to step deck instead to get the better crush on the head gasket. Or some people with the really high horsepower applications, they're step decking and running an O-ring to get even more crush on the head gasket. So it de it depends on application stuff, and certain machinists have their preferences on which way they're going to do it. But a lot of it comes down to is what the application is going to be street race drag race really high horsepower and stuff or street strip cars now the other thing with these uh, MID sleeves or sleeves in general is if you do have a problem with the engine in operation maybe uh, you torch a piston and end up damaging one particular cylinder uh, you've got the ability to replace an individual sleeve correct all of our sleeves and stuff with wet sleeve designs they're all replaceable individually or full as a set um, the technology that we base these sleeves upon was basically the same thing that diesel motors, tractor motors, they've been, since they've been in existence, that's how they were. They were generally a wet sleeve design. Um, so what we did is we took that same concept and just changed the application for it. So by putting O-rings and stuff, sealing them on the bottom of the sleeves, what that essentially does is makes the sleeves completely replaceable without distorting or bothering the cylinders next to it. You can take out one cylinder, put a new cylinder in, redeck, rehone, and reuse that block over again. Or if you have a problem, say you go to a max bore size of a kit, like say on a K-Series Honda, you go to 90 millimeter, biggest you can go. You can take all four sleeves out, put a whole new fresh set in, redeck, rehone, start back 87, 86 or 87 millimeter bore, and use that whole block over again. So, so since the cylinders are just put in with an O-ring, they don't distort the cylinders next to it because everything's all individually held in um, separate from each other. Oh, look, John, that's been really interesting. Good to get some accurate information behind that sleeving technology and get some answers to those questions. If our viewers want to find out more about Dart and Sleeves, how can they get in touch? Um, you can email Dart and Sleeves at sales at darton-international.com or go to dartonsleeves.com. Um, all of our information is right there, how to contact us. And we have a lot of technical information on there also that you can look up. And also download our catalog. Same thing, it has a lot of technical information in our catalog. Oh, perfect. Thanks a lot for, the, for your time there, John. No problem. Thank you for coming by. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions, which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.